The room was filled with a hum of excitement as the alien students gathered in their seats. They had been learning about various galactic cultures and the complex histories of civilizations that spanned across the universe, but today's lesson was different. Today, they would be learning about a topic that had fascinated and confused many of them for years, the mysterious ban on humans from participating in galactic war. Professor Zylara, an advanced being from the planet Threxion, stood at the front of the classroom. Her long, flowing tendrils, a symbol of her high rank among the Threxians, shifted as she prepared to address her students. A hush fell over the room as her students, ranging from the towering, rock-skinned Zojins to the shimmering, translucent crystalli, waited eagerly for the lesson to begin. Today's topic, Professor Zalara began, her voice echoing through the chamber in a melodic tone, is one that has puzzled many civilizations for centuries. We will explore the real reason why humans, despite their intelligence and their potential, have been banned from joining the Galactic War. You may have heard many rumors about humans. Some say they are too unpredictable. Others claim they are too fragile. But today, we will delve into the truth, the real reason that the Galactic Council has deemed humans unfit for war. The room went silent, the students' glowing eyes fixed on the professor, eagerly awaiting the lesson. Professor Zylara flicked a switch, and a holographic map of the galaxy appeared above her head. It was an intricate design, showing countless star systems, planets, and interconnected trade routes. The students had seen it before, but today, it was different. Today, it seemed to pulse with an energy of its own. The Galactic War, she began, is not just a conflict between planets, it is a battle for balance. For centuries, different civilizations have fought for control over resources, ideologies, and power. But the war is more than just about winning or losing. It is about survival, about maintaining the fragile equilibrium that keeps the universe in check. The Galactic Council, composed of representatives from the most advanced civilizations, oversees the rules of engagement, ensuring that no one civilization becomes too powerful and that balance is maintained. The holographic map shifted, focusing on a particular region of space, a cluster of stars surrounded by an aura of mystery. It was the Earth system where humans lived. Professor Zalara pointed to the small blue planet. This is Earth, home to humanity, she continued, her tone becoming more serious. Humans, despite their relatively recent rise in the cosmic timeline, have shown remarkable potential. They are adaptable, creative, and, above all, curious, but they also have a history of chaos, of conflict, and of destruction. It is this very nature that has made them a dangerous wild card in the galactic equation. The students listened intently as she spoke, each processing the information in their own way. One of the students, a young Zajian named Zethra, raised a hand. Professor, if humans are so dangerous, why not just isolate them? Zethra asked her voice tinged with curiosity. Why ban them from the war altogether? Professor Zylara nodded, acknowledging the question. A good question, Zethra. The answer lies in the core of what makes humans unique. You see, the galactic war is not fought just with weapons and armies. It is a war of ideologies, of strategies, of influence. And humans, humans have something that no other species possesses, the power of unpredictability. She paused, letting the weight of her words settle in the air. The Council realized that if humans were allowed to join the Galactic War, their unpredictability could tip the balance in dangerous ways. Not because they were weak or unskilled, but because they could not be predicted. They are driven by emotions, anger, love, fear, and hope, in ways that no other species is. These emotions give them strength, but they also make them volatile. And, in a war where every move must be calculated, where every decision could mean the end of a civilization, that volatility is a dangerous factor. The students exchanged glances, their minds racing as they tried to understand this concept. The idea that a species could be so unpredictable, so driven by emotion, was alien to them. Many of the students had been raised in cultures that valued logic and reason above all else. Professor Zylara continued, during the first few encounters between humans and other galactic civilizations, 
there were moments when human actions defied all expectations. One moment, they were allies, cooperating with other species in the pursuit of peace. The next, they were at war with those same allies, driven by something as simple as a misunderstanding or a broken promise. It was chaos. But how did they become so unpredictable? asked Lyra, a young crystallized student whose translucent body shimmered under the classroom lights. Surely, they must have had some kind of control over their emotions. Professor Zylara gave a soft, knowing smile. Control? Perhaps, but not in the way you think. You see, humans have always struggled with their emotions. They are a species that feels deeply. The highs and lows of their emotional experiences are what shape their actions, for better or worse. They are not driven by logic alone, as most of us are. Instead, they act based on their gut instincts, their desires, their fears, and that unpredictability is what made them so dangerous. A wave of murmurs rippled through the classroom as the students began to grasp the complexity of human nature. For many of them, the concept of such erratic behavior was difficult to comprehend. They had been taught to suppress emotion, to think logically, to make decisions based on what was most efficient and beneficial. The idea that a species could act based on their feelings was something entirely foreign to them. Professor Zylara raised a tendril, silencing the room. But this unpredictability is not what makes humans truly unique, she said, her voice taking on a more somber tone. No, the real reason that humans are banned from the galactic war lies in their potential to change, to evolve, to learn from their mistakes, to grow in ways that no other species has ever done. The students were silent, pondering her words. The holographic map shifted again, this time showing images of human history, wars, revolutions, moments of triumph and despair. Despite all their flaws, despite the chaos they had caused, humans had a remarkable ability to recover, to rebuild, and to rise above their past mistakes. It was this resilience, this capacity for growth, that had made them both dangerous and fascinating to the Galactic Council. You see, Professor Zylara continued, the true reason humans are banned from the war is not because of their unpredictability, nor their emotions. It is because they have the potential to become more than any other species in the galaxy. They are at a crossroads, a point in their evolution where they could either spiral into self-destruction or transcend the limitations that have held them back for so long. The Galactic Council saw this potential and decided that humans must be given the chance to evolve, to find their own path without the influence of galactic powers. The room was filled with a sense of awe as the students processed this new understanding. The idea that humans were not inherently unfit for war, but rather needed the time and space to evolve into something greater, was a concept that struck deep into their hearts. Professor Zylara's final words lingered in the air. Humans are not banned because they are weak. They are banned because they are strong in ways we do not yet fully understand. And the time may come when they will join the galactic war, but only when they have learned to master the most important lesson of all, the ability to control their own destiny. The students sat in stunned silence, their eyes wide as the weight of Professor Zylara's words began to settle into their minds. The room felt heavier, as if the very air around them had thickened with the realization of just how significant humanity's place in the galaxy was. There was something raw, something real, in the idea that humans, with all their flaws, had the potential to change the course of galactic history. It was a thought that made many of them uneasy. For civilizations like the Zojins and the Crystalli, who prided themselves on logic and unshakable order, the idea of a species that could act purely on instinct, on emotion, was both intriguing and terrifying. Zithra, the young Zajian student, was the first to break the silence. Her voice was filled with a mix of awe and confusion as she spoke. Professor, are you saying that the Galactic Council believes humans are capable of surpassing their emotional impulses, that they could actually control their destiny? She paused, her voice trailing off as if trying to wrap her mind around the concept. But how? We've seen their history, their wars, their endless cycles of conflict. It seems impossible to imagine them ever being in control. Professor Zylara regarded Zethra with a thoughtful expression. 
It is true that humans have a long history of conflict, of war, and of making mistakes that often lead to even more mistakes. But it is also true that they learn from their failures. They are a species that has not yet fully realized the extent of their potential. They are on the cusp of something profound, but they cannot be allowed to join the war until they understand that power. And until they learn the greatest lesson of all, to fight not for conquest, but for unity. The room fell quiet again as the students absorbed her words. The holographic map shifted once more, zooming in on Earth, and images of human history filled the air. There were scenes of ancient empires clashing, cities falling, and moments of sheer destruction. But amid these images, there were also glimpses of peace, the fall of tyrants, the birth of new ideas, the rise of movements that sought to bring about unity and harmony among people. Lyra, the crystallized student, looked up from the hologram with a mixture of curiosity and concern. But if humans are so capable of change, why do they keep repeating their mistakes? she asked, her voice a soft chime of wonder. Why do they continue to fight amongst themselves, even when they know the consequences of their actions? Professor Zylara's gaze softened as she regarded the student. It is in their nature, Lyra. They are a species of extremes. Their emotions can drive them to greatness, but they can also drive them to destruction. The problem, however, lies in the fact that humans are not yet fully aware of the power they hold within themselves. They are still learning, still growing, and that growth is not always linear. Sometimes they take one step forward and two steps back. But that doesn't mean they cannot eventually evolve into something greater. That is why the Galactic Council has made the decision to leave them out of the war for now, to allow them to mature, to find their own way without interference. Zethra still seemed puzzled. So humans have the potential to change, but they have to do it on their own. They can't be guided by other civilizations. Professor Zalara nodded gravely. Exactly. Every civilization in the galaxy has its own path to follow, its own lessons to learn. The Zojins, the Crystalli, the Threxians, we all have our unique histories, our own methods of achieving peace and order. But humans are different. They must find their own path. If they are forced into the war before they understand their own power, they may not just lose, they may destroy themselves in the process. The hologram flickered, showing an image of a young human leader someone many of the students had seen before, someone who had played a pivotal role in the history of humanity. His face was determined, yet there was a look of uncertainty in his eyes. Professor Zylara continued, her voice growing more intense as she spoke. This is why the Council chose to intervene, why they made the decision to bar humans from the war. There was a time, not long ago, when humans were on the brink of understanding their place in the galaxy, but they were not ready. The war would have been the final test of their development, but it was too soon. They were not yet ready to face the challenges of such a conflict. Lyra's shimmering form flickered as she absorbed this. But are we not interfering with their natural progression by preventing them from joining the war? She asked, her voice filled with a question that lingered in the air. Are we not stunting their growth, keeping them from experiencing what they need to become better, stronger, more capable? Professor Zalara's tendrils shifted, and for a moment she looked almost sad. Sometimes growth must be protected, she said softly. The path to maturity is not always clear, and it is not always linear. The Council sees the potential in humanity. They see the spark of something that could change the galaxy forever. But that spark must not be extinguished before it has had the chance to grow. And for that to happen, humans must learn to control their impulses, their desires, and their emotions. Only then will they be able to join the war, not as a threat, but as a force for good. The students sat in silence, reflecting on the gravity of Professor Zylara's words. For many of them, the idea that a species as young and volatile as humanity could one day become a force for peace seemed impossible. But there was something in the professor's voice, a quiet conviction, that made them wonder if perhaps humanity was more capable than they had ever given them credit for. Zethra spoke again, her voice softer now. But what happens if they fail? What if they cannot control themselves, if they cannot evolve? What then? 
Professor Zalar's eyes darkened, and for a moment it seemed as if the entire room had been swallowed by the weight of her response. If they fail, she said, her voice like a distant echo, if they are unable to change, to rise above their own nature, then the galaxy will have no choice but to intervene, but I do not believe that will happen. Humans are not like other species. They are capable of great destruction, yes, but they are also capable of great creation. They have the ability to build, to grow, to change, and one day they will realize that power. One day they will learn that true strength does not come from conquering others, but from conquering themselves. A long silence followed as the students let her words sink in. They had come to learn about the human species in the context of war, but what they had learned was so much more profound than that. The lesson was not just about why humans were banned from the war, it was about the very nature of progress, of growth, and of the untapped potential that lay within every species, including their own. Finally, Zethra spoke again, her voice filled with a sense of understanding. So, the real reason humans are banned from the war is because they need time to find their true strength. They need to learn how to master themselves before they can master the war. Professor Zalara smiled, her tendrils relaxing. Yes, Zethra, you understand now. The ban is not a punishment, it is a protection, a safeguard to ensure that humanity can evolve into something greater than it is today. The room was quiet again, but this time it was not filled with confusion or disbelief. It was filled with a sense of awe. The students had learned something that would stay with them for the rest of their lives. And as they left the classroom that day, their thoughts lingered on humanity, on their potential, and on the lesson that had been taught in the most unexpected way. The galaxy was vast and the future uncertain, but perhaps, just perhaps, there was hope for even the most unpredictable species to find their way. The day had stretched long after Professor Zalara's lecture, and the students were left to ponder the implications of the Galactic Council's decision to keep humans out of the war. It was not just about humanity's inability to join the conflict, it was about something deeper, something more profound. The question echoed in their minds. Could a species as young and volatile as humans really evolve into a force for good in the galaxy? The professor had painted a picture of hope, a potential, but hope was often a fragile thing, one that could be shattered by a single misstep. Zethra, Lyra, and the others couldn't help but wonder how the future would unfold, and whether humans could truly rise to the challenge that lay before them. As the students filtered out of the lecture hall, the weight of the conversation still hung heavy in the air. Zethra, the Zajian student, was the first to speak up, her voice tinged with a kind of curiosity that could only be born from an unanswered question. Do you think humans will ever be ready? Will they ever be able to control their emotions enough to participate in the war without destroying themselves? Lyra, the crystal eye, turned her gaze toward the holographic projection of Earth that still hovered in the center of the room. I'm not sure. They are unpredictable, erratic even. Their history is riddled with violent conflicts, and yet, there are moments of peace, moments of hope, like brief glimpses through a fog. But can they really overcome their instincts, their aggression? Zethra's metallic skin shimmered as she tapped a tentacle to her chin in contemplation. I suppose if anyone can, it would be them, but I wonder what it would take. Their nature is so different from ours. We Zojins pride ourselves on logic and control, and yet, these humans are driven by something else entirely. Their emotions can be their strength, but they can also be their undoing. Lyra let out a soft, melodic hum, the sound of her people's voice carrying an air of skepticism. But perhaps that is their true strength, that they are able to embrace their emotional impulses without the burden of overthinking every decision. Perhaps that is the key to their evolution. A species that learns to balance that emotion with wisdom could become something extraordinary. The conversation lingered between them, a web of thoughts and ideas, but Zethra's mind began to wander. She could not shake the image of the young human leader she had seen in the hologram earlier. There was something undeniably compelling about him, something that spoke of a fire within him, a desire to break free of the cycles of destruction that had long defined his people. 
She wondered if this was the same fire that had fueled the rise of many civilizations, the fire that led them to greatness, but also to ruin. It was a paradox that the galaxy had seen time and again. The following days passed with a sense of quiet reflection. The students continued their studies, but there was an underlying tension in the air. The lesson they had learned about humanity, about the complexities of their emotional nature and the deep potential they possessed, weighed heavily on them. They couldn't help but wonder how much time the human species had before they either evolved or destroyed themselves. Would they be able to rise above their flaws, or would they succumb to the very impulses that had held them back for centuries? Zethra, in particular, found herself obsessed with the idea of humanity's future. She spent long hours in the library of the Galactic Academy, reading everything she could find about human history. She studied their wars, their conflicts, and their leaders. She saw the pattern. Humanity had always been at odds with itself, torn between desires for power and peace, between war and diplomacy. But as she read, she also began to notice something else. There were moments of brilliance, moments where humanity had risen above its instincts and done something truly remarkable. She read about the formation of the United Nations, about the end of apartheid in South Africa, about the global movements for equality and justice. These were not perfect moments, but they were steps towards something better. There was a part of her that believed, no, that wanted to believe that humanity could evolve. But how could she be so sure? And what if the galaxy was wrong to leave them out of the war? Could they not handle the pressure? Were they truly destined to destroy themselves, or was there a chance that they might learn to control their impulses and emerge as a force for peace? Her thoughts were interrupted by the arrival of a message from the professor. The Galactic Council had decided to hold a summit, a gathering of the galaxy's greatest minds to discuss the future of humanity. Zethra was invited to attend, along with Lyra and several other students from the Academy. The summit would be a chance for them to engage in a dialogue about the human species, to determine whether or not they were truly ready to take their place in the Galactic Order. The decision would be made in the coming weeks, and Zethra knew that this could be the turning point, the moment where humanity's fate would either be sealed or set on a new path. At the summit, representatives from all corners of the galaxy gathered, their diverse forms and cultures a testament to the vastness of the cosmos. Zethra, Lyra, and the other students stood among them, their minds buzzing with questions and concerns. How would the discussions unfold? Would humanity be granted the opportunity to prove themselves, or would they be cast aside as too dangerous? The atmosphere was thick with anticipation. Professor Zylara stood at the front of the room, her voice calm yet authoritative as she began the proceedings. Welcome, esteemed representatives of the Galactic Council. We gather here today to discuss the future of humanity, a species whose potential is both extraordinary and frightening. We have seen their history, their struggles, and their triumphs. But the question remains, are they ready to join the Galactic Community? Are they prepared to take on the responsibility that comes with such power? A murmur of voices filled the room as the representatives discussed the question. Some argued that humanity was far too volatile, too unpredictable to be allowed into the fold. Others believed that the time had come for humanity to prove their worth, to show that they had learned from their past mistakes. Zethra stood among them, listening intently. She had heard all the arguments before, but she couldn't help but wonder if they were missing something. Could humanity rise to the occasion? Could they prove themselves worthy of a place in the galaxy? The debate raged on for hours, with voices rising and falling, each representative making their case. But as the discussion reached its peak, a voice interrupted, a voice unlike any other in the room. It was a human voice, not one of the representatives, but of a young man who had stepped forward. His name was Elias, and he had been invited to speak on behalf of humanity. His presence in the room was a bold statement in itself, humanity's chance to speak directly to the council. Elias's voice was steady, his words measured but full of passion. I know that humanity's history is filled with violence and mistakes, he began, his eyes scanning the room, meeting the gaze of every representative. But I also know that we have the ability to change. We are not defined by our past, we are defined by what we choose to become. We may be flawed, 
We may stumble, but we are capable of learning, of growing. We are not asking for your trust, we are asking for the opportunity to prove ourselves, to show you that we are more than just our mistakes. The room fell silent as Elias spoke. His words resonated with many of the representatives, their skepticism giving way to a glimmer of hope. Zethra watched as the debate shifted, as the council members began to reconsider their stance. There was something about Elias's sincerity, his belief in his people, that made them reconsider their judgment. Could humanity truly be more than the sum of its history? Professor Zalara's voice cut through the silence. Thank you, Elias, she said, her voice filled with a rare warmth. You have given us much to consider. The decision will not be easy, but your words have sparked something important. We will take this into account as we move forward. As the summit came to an end, the students and representatives left the chamber with heavy hearts and uncertain futures. The decision was still to be made, but for the first time, there was a sense that humanity might have a chance. Whether they would be allowed to join the galactic community, whether they could prove themselves worthy of the responsibility that came with it, was still unknown. But one thing was certain. Humanity's journey was far from over, and their destiny had yet to be written.